Up next on Hobby Link International, taking pictures of your models. Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from HobbyLinkInternational.com and welcome to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be talking about taking pictures of your models and just to get it out of the way, I am not a professional photographer. I do my pictures quick and dirty, but we got emails and private messages about how I took the pictures because people wanted to take basically the same pictures I am so they have a cleaner background for their pictures that they submit to the site or they submit to any of our contests and also for our YouTube live streams. So I'm going to take you through that today and show you what we do. So when you take your photos, you're going to be taking them on one of two things. Most people are going to be using their cell phone, which is quite all right because if you have a newer cell phone, it takes pretty darn good pictures, or you're going to have a DSLR, a point and shoot, something like that. I use an old Canon T4i that Kelly got me for Christmas about nine or ten years ago, and that is my go-to camera when I'm taking my pictures because I feel it takes better pictures than this guy. Kelly skedaddled out of the way, but this right here is your DSLR camera that you're going to use. And with the DSLR camera, you're going to either use one, two, three, or multiple lenses for certain things. Like I have two. This is a 75 to 300. And I don't remember what that one is. I think that might be a 50 millimeter lens. But all depending on where I'm set up in here is what I'm going to use. So let me take you through how I took those last pictures. This way you get an idea and hopefully it helps you out. To me, this is the most important part of your photography. And that's going to be your lighting. What I have are Supon LED lights with eMart stands. All of these were from Amazon and the links will be in the description below. These stands are lightweight. They're adjustable to, I think it was eight feet. The lighting themselves are nice LED panels. The only problem with them is you do have to buy a separate power supply. The first feature that I like of the Supon LED panel is you are in total control of your lighting brightness or your lighting dimness. As you can see, I'm just turning the knob and it starts at 20%, which is pretty dim. And then you can work yourself all the way up to 100%. So if you want a more brighter feel to your model or if it's a creepy model and you want that dim lighting, you can work that knob either way you want. The next feature on the LED lamp is your Kelvin control, which is really nice. You can control it from 3300 all the way up to 5600 Kelvin. So you can go from a yellowish light all the way up to a bluish light, depending on how you wanna run your setup. And here's your fancy photo booth. Just a piece of poster board in black that's $1.09 from Michaels. You could pick tons of different colors if you want. And this is how I held the photo paper up, or I should say actually the poster board up. It's not the ideal way. I will be changing this up when I have a photo booth. All I did was take the scale 75 box. Then I put the paper in front of it. It held it up. No problems at all. It stayed sturdy on the table. But like I said, once I get a place that it's going to be set up permanently, then I'll attach the paper to something where I could change paper in and out. Now I have Bert set up where I want him in the middle of the paper. And I have the three lights set up around him. How you want your lights set up is you want two or I should say one from each side. This way you're eliminating those shadows and one from above. And the one in the back, I had a lean, so it's a little more difficult to get it set up. But again, once I have a place that it'll be set up permanently, I'll always have that top light. These lights were all set to 4400 Kelvin because that's the temperature of lighting I wanted for Bert, so he would look a little bit better in the pictures. And here's Bert all cropped into frame. And this is what you saw in the pictures that I posted on the community, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. It all really comes out nice with the lighting. Now this is an important step when you're taking the pictures. Make sure when you're taking the pictures and you're all set up, your camera's in place, make sure that you're not moving your camera, that you're moving the model underneath the lighting and snapping over your pictures. Another thing would be good to get, and I don't have it yet, but is a remote control for your camera that you can hit the button and snap it this way you don't shake your camera or get a blurry picture that way. And as you can see, this method is also good for other types of models, just not a little figure. You could put your big figures under here, starships, anything you really want. It's all a matter of lighting and getting that background nice and clear. You can also use this technique on your boxes. Just make sure you take off that cellophane wrapping 
And you're going to want to move either your left or right lamp more towards the front to get rid of the harsh shadow. Because of the dimensions of the box, you may not be able to see the front so well. Just play with your lighting just a little bit. These three pictures I wanted to show you what lighting can do. This is at 33, 44, and 5500 Kelvin. And you can see how the light plays with the colors, it plays with the background. So you have to set up in your area for how you want that picture to be taken, like I was saying. It also depends on the mood of your picture, if you want it brighter, dimmer. But this is what the Kelvin can do for your pictures, depending on how you want them to come out. And this is what I'm shooting on now. It's a Canon Rebel T4i. This camera's probably nine or 10 years old, like I said. Kelly and Kenny got it for me Christmas a while back. But it still does the job. It's a little funky on things I have to do, but it works and you saw the pictures. One of the main things that I can't stress enough is make sure that you have a tripod for your camera. It is gonna save you a lot of headaches trying to stack books or keep it on a table or hold it in your hands and be shaky. A tripod is of the utmost importance when you're taking pictures. And also, if you can, if you're using a DSLR, make sure that you get one of the little remote controls because even pressing the button on a tripod can make that picture shaky and blurry and you don't wanna end up doing that. And that's one of actually my next purchases. As for settings on my camera, I keep it in the P mode or program mode. And this is because the camera will automatically adjust the shutter speed and aperture for me. And these will be the optimal exposure settings. I could put it in auto, but auto focus will automatically focus for me. When you're in the P or program mode, you'll still be able to focus on the points that you wanna focus. So if you wanna just do his head, or like I did on the skeleton warrior, I focused in on his ax and so on and stuff like that. So that's why I keep it in program mode. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm still a beginner at photography. I do wanna take some classes to learn more about f-stops and shutter speeds and all that other good stuff that goes into taking photographs. This way I don't have to leave it in a certain mode and let the camera do things for me. And this is a picture of the monitor on my Canon Rebel T4i. And this is showing me that in program mode, the camera took the picture at 1 60th of a second, which means it's letting the most amount of light in to make the picture brighter. And the aperture was set at 5.6. So I still have to learn all these things. And if you're interested in taking pictures, there are classes online that you can take. Uh, I'm hopefully gonna find one around here that I can go to a hands-on class, but if not, I'm gonna start taking more classes online because I wanna learn more about how to set these up for the maximum uh, efficiency for the pictures that we are taking. So that's it on how I take photographs of my models. Hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you found it interesting, and hopefully you'll incorporate it into your pictures. This way when you are sending over articles or you're entering your builds into one of the contests or especially one of the live stream slideshows, your pictures will help your model stand out more without anything in the background because you don't really want that clutter and junk back there. You worked hard on your model for five, six, seven months, whatever it may have been, and you want people to see that model. So if you follow those steps or if you have any questions, just throw them in the comments section below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you guys soon. Don't forget, hit the subscribe and notification icon and I will see you all soon. Take care and bye-bye everybody.